Hello, good evening, everyone. Uh, hope my voice is clear to everyone. Hello, this is Vaishali Kanda from Spark Academy. Good evening, everyone. Okay, our today's topic is Hi, this is Vaishali Kanda from Spark Academy, and our today's topic is it is uh, principle of inheritance and variations. So before starting, before moving into the topic, I will uh, I would insist all of you to join us on uh, join us on any of these link Facebook. You can join Facebook. You can join YouTube, uh, Instagram, and uh, Telegram. Any of link you want to join, you can join us on any of this link. Okay, I am Vaishali Kanda from Spark Academy. Or else you can download the app. A Spark Academy app from the Play Store, and then you can join any of the course, and then you will uh, get uh, all the study material free, and uh, uh, previous year question paper solution, and uh, free videos of our live classes. Continuously, our live classes are going on. Okay, so that is recorded also. I mean, you can uh, join us live, join live class, and you ask your doubt within the live class. Okay. Uh, and you can check this videos afterwards in the app. So I would insist all of you to join, uh, to uh, download this uh, Spark Academy app and join any of our course. Okay, then uh, there will be doubt clarification session also. If your doubt, you can write your doubt, whatever topic you want us to repeat, you can write the, um, that in the topic in the chat. And we can arrange a doubt clarification session for you. Okay. So for that, for first, you what you need to do is uh, just download the app from uh, Play Store and join any of the course you want to. And, and then you will be having all this materials, all this access free. Okay. So admissions are going on right now. So please join us. Uh, download the app. And see, this is how live classes are going on generally. Even uh, I took live classes on daily basis. Okay. So this is how live classes are going on. You can join live class also. And you can uh, ask your doubt uh, within the class to your uh, whatever concerned teacher is there. Okay. So... Oh, this is how live class you can join and even check this you can check this live class of any date afterwards also and we uh, took uh, we give assignments on daily basis and we assess this and we correct them and uh, this assignments uh, are I mean uh, uh, they, that is very useful for your neat cracking okay for your uh, for your exam for exam point of view. So it is right now on 50% discount because of this pandemic. So uh, please join us, uh, join any of the course. I would uh, again insist you. So let's move towards the topic that is the principle of inheritance and variations. Okay, first, uh, I mean, uh, if we are talking about genetics, then we need to talk or it is mandatory to talk talk about Mendelism. Okay, Mendel. It is mandat uh, mandatory, compulsory, I need to talk about the Mendel. Okay, who is Mendel? This group, Gregor Johann Mendel. Okay. Gregor Johann Mendel. He is known as father of genetics. Who is father of genetics? Okay, when we are talking about genes and genetics, Mendel is the father of the genetics. Mendel proposed that inheritance is controlled by paired, germ pa paired germinal units or factors. Now they are called as gene. At the time, word gene was termed gene was not coined, but uh, it was, I mean, genes were known as factors for Mendel. 
and he termed he proposed that inheritance is controlled by paired germinal units or factors. Mendel performed hybridization exper experiment of garden pea. Garden pea, named as a scientific name of that, it is P. sensitivum from uh, um, from 1856 to 1864. He performed all the experiment in this eight years. Eight years of experimentation, he read out the result of his observation of natural and history society of Bern in 1865. Okay, uh, so Nature for the Schindler Variant was magazine of the German language which was published by a Nature History Society of Bern. This magazine main research, uh, in this maga magazine main research paper of the Mendel is this, or experiment in the plant hybridization was published in 1866. Mendel's work remained unnoticed. Okay, Ma Mendel it's uh, his work remained unnoticed for 34 years due to following reason for 34 years it was unnoticed because of darwin's okay at the time darwin was rocking rocking the scientific world at the time with by explaining the evolution theory theory of the origin of the life uh, in 1859 so it was the same era 1856 when Mendel was performing all this experiment and at the time only Darwin given uh, Darwin's theory of evolution was come uh, was came and uh, it was rocking the scientific world so because of that uh, Mendel was subsided I mean it was uh, not given any f focus so limited circulation and uh, the limited circulation of its publication its uh, magazine in which it was published Okay, so limited circulation is one of the reason and Mendel's conclusion about the heredity. Uh, where, uh, ahead of his time, Mendel died in 1884, long before his work came to be recognized. Okay, if he was died before that. Rediscovery of Mendel's work. So it was in 1900 that three scientists independently rediscovered the principle of her uh, heredity already worked out by Mendel. Uh, they they were Eric, okay, they were Eric von Tre uh, Treshermark of Australia, Hugo de Veris, and Carl Corrins. So uh, uh, in Batson, uh, firstly used the term genetics. He is known as father of modern genetics. W. Betson. He is known as father of modern genetics and Muller established cytogenetics. This is all about history of genetics. Reason for the Mendel's success was what was the reason behind his success? Mendel first uh, analyzed the work of former scientists and then first he analyzed the work of former scientists and then prepared his strategy of experiment. Mendel took one of one or two characteristics, only one or two characteristics one time for the breeding experiment. Mendel selected the pea plant for experiment because why he is this is important. Why he selected pea plant for the, its experiment purpose. So pea plant is the herbaceous and it is annual plant. It can be grown two or three times in a year. So a result obtained very shortly, peas flowers are bisexual and self-pollinated. So uh, emasculation and the cross-pollination can be applied in pea flower. It can easily grow in garden. Many contrasting characteristics are found in pea plant. Mendel selected seven pairs of contrasting characteristics of pea plant, and these characteristics are as follows. Which are, which are the seven characteristics of pea plant? These are. So, uh, I mean, a uh, reason for Mendel, uh, uh, again, other reason for the, his success. Mendel kept a complete record of every clause and used statistical method and law of probability and analyzing the result. Okay, he used statistical method and law of probability in analyzing his result. He took care to avoid contamination from the foreign pollen grains brought by the insects.
when they've selected only pure breeding varieties of pea for his experiment and grew uh, in the separate row. Mendel selected the inheritance of the character till F3 generation. Okay, these are the characteristics for that plant height, shape of the pod, position of the flower pod, color of the flower, color of the seed cord, cotyledon color, pod color, seed shape. So these are seven characteristics of pea plant. What, uh, what characteristics Mendel has selected? Then monohybrid cross. What is monohybrid cross? It is a cross between two organisms of a species that are different in the pair of contrasting characteristics. Okay, only one characteristic is selected, but it is contrasting. Height of a plant, that is the name of characteristic. If it is dwarf, if it is tall, those are known as uh, contrasting characteristics. First, Mendel selected long and dwarf plants of the garden pea. Mendel removes, removes stamen of the flower of tall plant in the bud condition. This is called as emasculation. The bag, a bag tied over the flower for the pre prevention of the cross pollination. This is called bagging. Dwarf plant took as a male plant and their flower covered through the bag. On this, uh, after maturity, pollen grains of the dwarf plant spread over the stigma of the long plant and it again covered through the bag. This is how he performed his experiment. This is the steps of normal experiment, normal crossing over a hybridization experiment. Here it is monohybrid cross. Okay. So monohybrid cross here he has taken two flowers. One is of dwarf plant, one is of uh, um, uh, to, uh, uh, long plant okay so stem in from this plant one of the plant of uh, flower stem in is removed and then bagging is done then uh, pollen grains are sprayed over the stigma and covered the bag cover through the bag for the removal for the uh, uh, I mean uh, minimize the contamination part okay seed collected through the long plants Afterwards, Mendel obtained F1 generation through the uh, showing the former, showing of the former. This process is called hybridization. F1 generation is called hybrid. Mendel obtained only tall plant in the F1 generation. Mendel applied reciprocal cross, but the result did not affect. After this process, Mendel obtained F2 generation through the solving. Uh, through the sowing of those seeds which obtained from the self-pollination of the F1 plants. In F2 generation, tall and dwarf plants obtain in the ratio of 3 is to 1. This ratio is tall and dwarf plant. Okay, so that this is known as phenotype. Phenotype that we can see, whatever we can see that is known as phenotype. Whatever we can see outside, that is because of the genes present inside. Okay, so whatever genes are responsible, if we look and look, look into that genes, that is known as genotype. Okay, so genotype and phenotype. Here, phenotypically ratio is 3 is to 1. Then F2 generation, we are getting F2 generation. It is pro, uh, proved that characters of the tallness in the plant of the F1 generation does not cure. So it was not pure. Mendel used this technique for the six character, uh, characters in the experiment and obtained the same result. The phenotypic ratio of F2 generation in monohybrid cross is 3 is 2. Okay, so that, uh, that's what I have explained. And genotypic ratio is 1 is to 2 is to 1. So uh, what, when we look into the genes, it is 1 is to 2 is to 1. The plant possesses two factors of each character. The term factor was first used by the by Corinth, which was called determiner or element by Mendel. Conclusion of monohybrid cross 
principle what are the pro, uh, what are the conclusion he got from this monohydrid cross this first conclusion was principle of paired factor a plant possesses two factors of each character two factors that means two genes two genes for each character for example in um, when we are talking about our cell okay for our self, we are, when we are talking about our self, then if you take any one trait, any one characteristic, for example, if you take a characteristic like color of your eye, then that is for this character, responsible genes, factors in terms of the Mendel language. Okay, uh, there are two genes responsible for one character. Each trait is controlled by unique factor. Second, Second uh, conclusion is principle of dominance. Out of two factors or alleles representing the alternate form of trait, one is dominant and express itself in the hybrid F1 generation. Okay, whatever, whoever is dominant, it is expressed here in F1 generation. Okay, the other factor or allele is recessive, what he called here allele. It is recessive and does not show its effect. It is called Mendel's law of dominance. Okay, whoever is recessive, it can be expressed. That is known as law of dominance. The factor of dominant character is denoted by the capital letter and the factor of recessive character is denoted by small letter. Okay, so this is monohybrid cross tall plant and dwarf plant see this is look here it is a, uh, written as the capital letters here it is small letters and f1 generation we are writing it is hybrid that is small t and capital t okay for f f2 generation we need to uh, make it like this we need to calculate it like this okay so this is how what is phenotypic ratio of this monohybrid cross and that means three three plants are tall and one plant we got that is drop but genotypically it is like this one is to two is to one okay exception of principle of dominance and paired factor so a principle of dominance or and pair factors for that we need to discuss about incomplete dominance, co-dominance, multiple allele, pleiotropy, all this. Okay. First is incomplete dominance. Incomplete dominance was discovered by Carl Corrins in Mirabilis Jalapa, incomplete dominance is phenomenon where none of the two contrasting factor or alleles is the dominant. Okay, no one, no factors, no genes is dominant here. So in F1 generation, okay, F1 generation, we generally got the characteristics for, uh, given by the or expressed by the dominant one, but here they none of them are dominant. None of them are dominant because of that the expression of the character in the F1 generation is intermediate. It is partially from one side, partially from the other side. So in Mirabilis Jalapa, it is also known as four o'clock plant or Gulbansi. In this plant, there are two types of the flowers, color of the flower. Okay, one is red and one is white. But this color is not dominant characteristics. Okay, genes for this color, it is not dominant. It is incomplete dominance. It is showing incomplete dominance. That's why what happened when you cross this red versus white? Okay, normally in F1 generation, we get the result of the dominant one. Normally, if red is dominant, then F1 generation, we get red flowers. If white is dominating, then we get white flower. But what we are getting here, that is pink flower. Okay, pink flower. That means none of them is dominant. It is mixed characteristic. Partially it is coming from red side. Partially it is coming from white side. 
that's why red plus white we are getting pink color in f1 generation so when two types of plants are cross are cross the hybrid f1 generation have pink flowers f1 generation are self cross and the plants of the f2 generation are of three types red pink and white okay in the ratio of 2 1 is to 2 is to 1 Okay, phenotypically and genotypically ratio is similar here. When we are talking about monohybrid cross, normal monohybrid cross, at that time it is three is to one and one is to two is to one in genotype. Okay, but here when we are talking about incomplete dominance, it is one is to two is to one, both phenotypically as well as genotypically. Okay. Next, see this is Mirabilis gelata. Normally, it is this red and white in color, or what we call dark pink and white in color. Okay, so here this type of generation we are getting, this type of flowers we are getting. Here also we are getting pink flower. Okay. so incomplete dominance is also found in color of flower in uh, this and which is known as dog flower and feather color of the andalusian falls okay here it is black in color here it is white in color whatever color whatever gene is dominant it should be shown in f1 generation but what we are seeing that is black and white color okay we are see we are phenotype is showing black plus white color that is blue color we are getting some bluish color of this andalusian pole okay this feather colors so because this genes are showing incomplete dominance codominance now next is codominance incomplete dominance the alleles are able to express themselves in uh, independently in generation okay so in incomplete partially it is coming from one partially it is coming from other but what so it is mixed here what is shown in codominance the alleles are able to express themselves independently so it is not mixed if we see stripes if we see uh, black and white if we see red and white okay red plus white is pink if we can't see pink color see what type of things we are looking here okay look at this cow See this cattle is red in color. This is white in color. Whatever uh, allele is uh, dominating, it will show its color. Okay. If it is incomplete, then we can see a mixed. I mean, a uh, brown plus or red plus white that is pinkish color. But here, what we can see, brown is separately seen, white is separately seen. So that means it is known as they are both expressing themselves independently. that is known as codominance okay they are showing their characteristics phenotypically they are independent that is codominance okay here two types of pure cattle red and white we have seen cross breeding of this individual f1 generation are found having brown color okay here heterozygote of f1 generation both alleles are expressed themselves independently the effect is produced due to juxta position of the small patch this is because of juxta position of the small patch of the red and white color it is also known as mosaic inheritance both alleles are codominant in f1 generation on breeding the roan hybrids produce three types of cattle uh, red roan white roan uh, red and white in the ratio Two is to one is to two is to one. Next, see, like this. This is red. This is roan. This is, I mean, this type of. Ah, uh, you can see red, roan, and white. Okay, one red, one roan, and one white. So it is phenotypically and genotypically same. examples of codominance is uh, seen in sickle cell anemia sickle cell hemoglobin okay the alleles for the sickle cell hemoglobin hps is codominant with the allele for the normal hemoglobin uh, hemoglobin 
even in case of co-dominance, we can see in case of AB in blood grouping, AB or blood grouping, AB when, see, in a person who is having blood group AB, we can see alleles for the blood group A is also expressed, allele for the blood group B is also expressed over erythrocytes. So, it is co-dominance. Even in case of MN blood group, we can see this type of MN blood group, uh, co-dominance in MN blood group. Then multiple alleles. When student discovered multiple alleles for the first time, more than two alternative forms of the genes are called multiple alleles. Multiple alleles are located on the same locus and homologous chromosome. A diploid individual contains two alleles and gamete contains one allele for the character. Human blood group has three alleles, ABO, uh, three alleles. Four, uh, four allele regulate coat color of the rabbit. So this, these, is, these are example of multiple alleles. Human blood group. Okay, we will see one example with the human blood group. Okay, it is human blood group having four blood groups as A, B, A, B and O. So A, B, O blood groups are determined by allele 1, A, B and other respective recessive one that is D. Okay, O. We can say O. So when A and B both are uh, expressed, it is known as co-dominant. So here three alleles are there. So the N is the number of alleles of the gene and the number of different position of the genotype. So here three N equal to it is three. So six genotypes we are getting because of the three three alleles. Presence of three alleles gives us six different genotypes like this. Okay. This is showing A. This is showing. Okay. This is B. This is B. This is AB. This is O. Like that. So six genotype we can see. Next is pleiotropic. Pleiotrophy that means pleiotrophy that means a gene regulates multiple phenotype multiple phenotypic effect. Only one gene regulates multiple phenotypic effect. Normal red blood cell is having this type of disc shape, which we call donut shape or a, a normal a disc shape. But in case of sickle cell anemia, this gene changes because of the mutation because of the mutation it changes its shape and because of some reason we can say genetic disorder it changes its shape to sickle cell okay next is principle or law of segregation <coughs> there is mixing of two factors segregation mixing of two factor in hybrid for f1 generation at the time of the gamete formation F1 generation, two factors separate or segregate or pass into different gametes randomly. The gametes come to have one factor or one pair. The gametes fuse randomly during fertilization so that factors come together in F2 generation and express themselves freely. So dwarf plants obtain in F2 generation uh, gametes are always pure for a character, characters, hence it is called law of purity of gametes. Okay, when we call alleles, they are different, but when we call gametes, they are pure. They are, so that's why it is uh, uh, called that they are following law of purity. Dihybrid cross. It is a cross between two organisms of species that are different in two contrasting characteristics. Mendel selected the following two characters for this purpose. Two characters he selected that is yellow and green. Okay, color of cotyledons. Color of cotyledon that means, okay, this is pea plant, a pea seed, seed of pea. Okay, whatever color of this cotyledon this two portion of the seed color of the scotyladen that is yellow either it is yellow or green 
and he selected other character that is shape of the seed that is round or wrinkled in which yellow and round traits are respective to dominate okay so we can write like this yellow and yellow and brown which is dominating trait i will change the color so yellow and brown it is dominating characteristics and uh, uh, green and wrinkled green and wrinkled that is recessive trait okay this is recessive g and wrinkled so we can write recessive traits in smaller case so mendel performed cross between the pure breeding pea plant having yellow round seeds that is y y y r r and pure breeding pea breeding pea plant having recessive trait that is uh, y y so green if this written is like this so g and w is not written here it is written as y y r r so only we are giving only we are giving a naming this as y and r in recessive and y and r in a smaller case okay so all plants of the f1 generation were yellow and brown that is like this so here this is dominating this is dominating the factor of the both characteristics will have independently segregated to each other during the gamete formation okay gametes are pure you all know that thus total four types of the gametes will be there y r y r y r like this like this like this. so an f1 generation on selfing of f1 generation the resultant f2 generation shows shows four types of the plants yellow and round yellow and wrinkled green and round and green and wrinkled in this ratio 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 ratio is 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 so 1 is showing this type of recessive this type of recessive trait totally completely recessive trait so this is that okay this is the dihybrid cross dihybrid we are selecting two characters that's why it is known as dihybrid cross okay phenotypically okay that 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 that is ratio we are getting for phenotypes not for genotypes genotypically it is like this next the conclusion of dihybrid cross number of geneto genotype in any case it is 3 is 2 and number of genotypes in dihybrid cross that's why n that is it is dihybrid cross so that's why two characters are taken so it is 3 to 3 rest to 2 okay 3 3 power 2 that means 3 power 2 3 square that is 9 yellow round and green wrinkle plant showed the parental combination of 9 plus 1 while the green round and yellow wrinkle shows the new combination of 3 plus 3 plus equal to 3 plus 3 equal to 6 the ratio between the parental combination and new combination is 5 is to 3 next is law of independent assortment mendel concluded that two factors of character assorted or separate independent of factors other characters at the time gamete formation and the uh, and gets randomly rearranged in offspring it is called law of independent assortment objection here was if uh, this law is applicable uh, applicable to only those factors or genes which are either situated distantly on the same chromosome or occur on the different chromosome okay either they should be present farther from each other or they should be present from on the different characteristics then and then we can apply law of independent assortment for this genes next is back cross back cross can be done by two ways okay one is known as out cross and one is known as test cross here out cross if the cross performed between f1 generation for example it is tt 
and the dominant parent that is PT. Okay, then it is called outcross. If the test all the offspring obtained from this cross have dominant characters and F1 generation can be analyzed through this cross. Test cross that means it cross performed between F1 generation and recessive parent. Okay, F1 generation that is hybrid one and recessive parent. So it is cross to know whether the individual is homologous or heterologous for the dominant characteristics. Okay. So monohybrid test cross. We are uh, we are uh, doing test cross of monohybrids. Okay, test cross. That means we are crossing it with the recessive parent. F1 generation with recessive parent. Parent. So it will give one is to one ratio. One is to one both in genotype and phenotype. Dihybrid test cross. Dihybrid test cross. Okay, here also we are getting this type of one is to one is to one is to one ratio. Importance of Mendelism. It is useful in the field of plant breeding. Advanced feature can be used in the development of improved varieties of offspring through the hybridization method. The knowledge of dominant and recessive characteristic is possible through the Mendelism only. Development of high productive varieties and disease resistant varieties is possible because of that Mendelism. So it is also useful in development and improvement of varieties in the animals. Why Mendel's work re, uh, remained un unrecognized? Mendel published his work in, uh, on inheritance on characteristics in 1865 uh, and remained unrecognized in 1900. Communication was not easy at that time. In those days, it, uh, it work could not, uh, uh, his work could not be widely published, publicized his concept of genes or factors as stable as discrete units that control the expression of traits and the uh, pair of alleles which did not blend with each other was not accepted by the com uh, contempt, uh, contemporaries as explanation for the uh, continuous variation seen in the nature. May, uh, Mendel's approach of using mathematics to explain biological phenomena. Okay, what he used here? Maths. For explaining biological phenomena was totally new and unacceptable to many of the biologists of his time. Mendel's work suggested that genes were discrete units. He could not provide any physical proof for the extension uh, for the uh, existence of the factors or genes or say what they were made of. Okay. We now know that genes are made up of DNA, but at that time he was not having any explanation for that. Okay, in this chapter we need to discuss about these type of disorders and before that we need to discuss about the sex determination in humans, how the sex are uh, determined, I mean chromosomal segregation. Uh, see, uh, you all know about the sex, how sex determined in the human beings, okay. That is because of the female and male uh, two alleles X and Y. Okay, X X that is on uh, that is referred as female and X Y it is male. One allele come from here, one allele come from here. In F1 generation, if it is X X, then it should it is female only. If it is X Y, then it is male. Okay, this is how sex is determined in case of uh, human beings. Okay. And there are some disorders we need to discuss here that these are, I mean, genetically, genetic disorder. So they are divided into two, Mendelian disorder and chromosomal disorder. Mendelian disorder, that means only one gene is defected in this case. Okay, if that is known as Mendelian dis disorder. If it is dominant, if it is recessive, you, we can discuss these type of different uh, type of diseases here, sickle cell anemia, uh, hemophilia, all these are included in Mendelian disorder which are responsible, which are result of one gene defect. 
the defect that means it can be anything mutations you need to study here mutation okay mutation that means one gene okay gene is uh, somehow it is getting defected it is changed okay the sequence is changed either it is point mutation or you can say it is frame shift mutation and because of mutation there is there are some disorders there may be some disorder present okay and the other type of disorder that is chromosomal disorder here a complete set of chromosome or either one chromosome one full chromosome is either added or either it is deleted anyhow it is deleted or added it is there are two types of chromosome two main types of chromosome autosomal chromosome and sex chromosome which is determining the sex okay male or female okay so uh, either autosomal chromosomes are duplicated or they are added in that case a set full chromosome not only one gene okay that type of syndrome that type of disorder we discuss in case of chromosomal disorder okay if it is it is in case of sex chromosome okay for example it is like this xxx or uh, so these type of one full chromosome is added or it it is like this x0 then y is not present or x is not present so these type of syndromes these type of disorder are discussed here in chromosomal disorder okay again i will uh, ask all of you i will insist all of you to join uh, download the spark academy app, app and join us join any of our courses okay enroll now join download the app okay admissions are open right now so you can join and uh, get benefits of all the co uh, course related benefits so now we will move towards the question answer session question answer session, uh, session okay first question that is mendel's last law mendel's last law is come on i am waiting for your answer you need to answer with the question number like one a one b like this okay one c like this you need to select you need to answer in your chat like 1a 1b 1c 1d okay along with the question number so that i can get idea clearly what you are answering for okay first question is mendel's last law is of what what is mendel's last last law we have discussed in sequence only what is his last law i am waiting for your answers i am waiting for all you to answer I'm waiting for all of you to answer, please. 
Mendel's last law of Okay, okay. Uh, okay, correct answer is all of you are correct. One C. Next question the contrasting pair of the factor. Contrasting pairs of the factors in Mendelian cross are called. This pair of the factors, they are known as multiple alleles, alleles, allo, allo loci or paramorphs. What they are known? Answer for the second question. Yes, Kulsum. Yes, Kulsum. Come on quickly. Pair factors. They are known as what? Yes, correct answer is B. 2B. Two 2B two is correct answer. Next. The ratio of phenotypes in F2 generation, F2 of monohybrid cross, of monohybrid cross. Mono hybrid cross. Third question. Ratio of ratio of phenotypes. We are talking about phenotypes, not genotypes. Phenotypes, not genotypes, I am saying. Phenotype that that we can see, okay? Whatever we can see, that is known as phenotype. Kulsum and mush, uh, mushrat. If you want to change your answer. Phenotype that we can see. Phenotypically, if we can see, that is this. Okay, 3 is to 1. One is recessive characteristics. It is showing one will see, uh, one will look like a dominant plant. Which of the following cross will give tall and dwarf pea plant in same proportion? In same proportion. Ratio is same. Fourth question. For fourth one. I want all answers. Come on quickly, fast. You all are confused. Some are giving good answers, correct answers. Same ratio. If it is test cross, then we are getting same result. Okay, I am saying test cross. Now you look. Okay, hint for this question is test cross. It's monohybrid test cross. Now, now recollect your knowledge about test cross. What do we mean by test cross? Marshat and uh, all others, whoever has given 4A as answer, that is not test cross. This 
in this case we are getting the same proportion okay so correct answer is both b both b is correct answer okay next fifth one a pure tall p was crossed with a pure dwarf p tall p pure with pure dwarf p all the plants of the f1 all the plants of the f1 were found to be tall this is due to what okay in f1 plant this is tall and pure tt crossed with the small tt recessive dwarf one okay if they are crossed in f1 generation we are getting this tt but phenotypically they are all the f1 were found all tall that is because of what that is because of what select your answer reason behind this tall plant it is what a law of dominance b disappearance of the factor for the dwarfness in the f1 generation or segregation of the factor sec the d coordination Come on, come on, quickly. Come on, quickly. Only two answers I have got from uh, you all. Okay. the two answers are correct but that is law of dominance that is because of law of dominance yes correct all of you now sixth one mendel selected p as a material for his experiment okay why he selected p plant i have told you it is important okay because it is an annual plant with a comparatively short life cycle the flowers are self pollinated the number of numbers of the seeds produced is quite large for all of us which of these is correct reason or all three are the correct reason sixth question p plant why he is selected ye sam satai wa Come on quickly, all of you. We don't have much time. Yes, correct answer is six D. All the the strains are correct. So, which of the following cross would produce a genotypical ratio of one is to two is to one in F two generation? in f2 generation genotypically it is 1 is to 2 is to 1 which of this cross is will produce it would produce this type of thing seventh question yes marsha can please so we are correct for the sixth one now answer come on quickly for the seventh Seventh, seventh should be. Now we are moving towards the seventh one should be. You are correct for the sixth one. Now next seventh you need to answer. No. One is to two is to one. Genotypically one is to two is to one. It is in this case. It is in this case. Okay, seven C is the correct answer. Seven C. No, no question. Eight. 
F1 generation, if it is like that, then we will get this type of phenotype. Okay, should I cross it? Should I try it? Or you can try it afterwards making that square, a net square. Okay. Next is 8 1. First, we'll finish if we get time, and then we can move towards that explanation. Okay. In humans, the domina dominance relationship between A and B alleles of the AB or blood group gene is an example of what? AB dominance is example of what? Complete dominance, incomplete dominance, codominance or epistasis. Complete dominance. Incomplete dominance, codominance, or epistasis. Answer for the eighth one. Answer for the eighth question. Correct answer is 8C. Yes, it is result for the of the codominance. Next is Punnett square is used to know what outcome of, outcome of the cross, probable result of the cross, types of the gametes, and result of meiosis. Yes, correct, uh, Shruti. It's 8C. Kulsum, you are correct. Punnett square. Now look at the ninth question. Punnett square is used to know outcome, outcome of a, outcome of a cross, probable result of the cross, type of gametes, or result of meiosis. Come on, quickly. We have only three minutes left. Quick answers, please. It is very easy question. What we have used? Why open edge squares are used? Outcome of the cross that we can see phenotypically. Probable result of a cross type of gametes result of meiosis. No. Correct answer is probable result of a cross. Next. Correct answer is probable. Probability. To look at the probability. Okay. What type of result probably, what type of result we will get genetically, phenotypically, that, that idea we are getting from Punnett square. Okay. The crossing of F1 gen, F1 to homozygous recessive plant parent is called, again, this question repeating. Okay. Not question is repeating, but the hint I have given you. C. F1 generation is Okay, to homozygous recessive parent. That is known as which type of thing? Tenth one, come on. Last question. One was this, TT. Two TT. This was known as outcross. And what is this called? Tenth. Answer. Come on. Back cross. Test cross. 
F1 cross or all of these. Yes, correct, Marsha. Correct, all of you. Strength B, test cross. Okay. Thank you, all of you, for joining this class. Thank you very much for joining this class, everyone. Goodbye, everyone.